As you guys know, playing Toll is one of my favorite ways of playing E4, and with the 1.35 Domination DLC, playing Toll has changed completely with a brand new idea set that you need to take in order to play Toll, and a lot of new missions, units, and so on, depending on the nation that you're playing as, and that's why today we'll be playing as Holland, one of the best nations to be playing Toll as, eventually we will be forming the Netherlands if we get 5,000 likes within the first week, so I know you guys are interested then we'll do the second bit where we form the netherlands and we even go colonial creating a trade empire that also plays toll we do start as a junior member of burgundy as holland so we need to break away from them it's actually insanely easy to do so there's two paths the first one we get other nations to support our independence right now france and austria are more than willing to support our independence if we get a little bit more relations with savoy they would also be uh willing to support our independence what this means is that very likely if two great powers support our independence burgundy is just going to give us our freedom now if that happens it's easy because we're already free so we can just expand into utrecht friesland and gelre but i want to actually have an independence war with the burgundians because if i do have an independence war it's very easy france and austria is going to do all the work for me after the war is over not only do i get my independence but i get two or three provinces as well from the other junior members of burgundy so that would be the most optimal outcome come in this particular campaign before we get to that point however we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get one stability since we start with 112 admin points the amount of mana points you start with depends on your mana point generated at the beginning of the campaign so primarily that's different based on your starting leader we have 555 uh, philip the third of uh, bourgogne which is the leader of burgundy however he will die fairly early on in the campaign since he's 48 and we don't want to rely on the burgundians i know some people People commented on my uh, previous Holland video why don't you just stay as a junior member of Burgundy so you get the mana points first off if you really want to cheese it you can just alt f4 until you get a ridiculously good starting leader as Holland because every time you declare the independence war you get a different leader so you can potentially get a 666 or a 555 like the starting leader is but that's not the point the point is that you want to be independent so you can start expanding the first part of the campaign even though you're playing toll we only have three provinces so you want to get as much of the Netherlands part as possible so you can afterwards develop these provinces and so you can get a bigger share of the uh, Dutch or the English node actually. Now let's go ahead and do our uh, estates first and foremost. Summon Zidiatus and go for Amsterdam, sure why not. See some Kroonlands, we have 35% Crownland so we're going to give out the plus one mana privilege for all three of the estates and the rest of the stuff is just a standard estate. If you're unsure what I mean by a standard estates, watch my estates video in the link in the description i think it's probably the best option next let's go ahead and uh, let's ask uh, the french and um i keep clicking on the burgundians but i'm trying to say the french and the austrians for that independence we're gonna get the free company in the province of amsterdam and that's gonna put us over the force limit but it's not a big deal we're gonna retreat the rest of our units in amsterdam as well and we're gonna right click our country show diplomatic feed and then we're gonna set all of these provinces as provinces of vital interest this is because whenever you start the war if you have the English, which also sometimes can support your independence, or the French, and they will likely be the ones to occupy some of these provinces here. They will give back these provinces to you as controlled provinces if you have them set as vital interest. If you don't do that, they're going to keep it for themselves, and you're not going to be able to take those provinces for yourself, which is a problem because that's literally the reason we're going with the independence war, and we're not just pressuring Burgundy into giving us our independence by themselves. And it looks like uh, Savoy also is going to be helping us out. You know what? Let's do it. The more the area right we're gonna be declaring our war on the 11th of december so you gotta be ready for this boys make sure that you also said the defensiveness edict in your capital province and well your only province really because they will attack den Haag. they cannot get to amsterdam until they've sieged down den Haag. so at least you will be able to hide over in amsterdam until the reinforcements come from the french and the austrian lands and it's time boys 11th of december alas ago it's gonna give us one stability hit not a big deal though and we got a what we got a six zero two hmm Oh, oh no! Oh, 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 my game just crashed. Oh, how unfortunate my game just crashed when that shitty leader came to- No, now I have to declare the war again, guys. Unbelievable. You know that old saying, guys? 859th time's a charm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is like the 18th time or something. So anyway, now it's time to crush some uh, Bargondons and, uh, and play Toll after.
basically, in a nutshell. Typically, they do focus on us, as in they send their army to crush us, so what you could do to help out with that is just set objectives for your allies here, so we're gonna set for the French some objectives in these lands, for the Austrians some more objectives in these lands. Pretty much all we gotta do now is just sit there, wait for the allies to win the war for us. And yes, sometimes you get the Austrians, the French, sometimes you get the English, the French. The reality is someone's gonna support you at whatever run you have in your particular campaign, so don't worry about it. As Joey Tribbiani anyone said don't worry about it I'm, I, ha I make a horrible New York accent don't I that was not even a New York accent was it that's right that was a new Amsterdam accent okay cuz we're colonizing Amsterdam in this run yeah skippy doop also you might be wondering why I didn't take the uh, burger loans that's because we're gonna take them after the war is over since we're gonna double in size so we can take bigger loans than just 21 ducats and then with those loans we can pay off the old loans that we took during this particular run well during the independence war Savoy so Proving once more to the world that they are not meant for uh, for combat. They lost their entire army, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they got zero units, man. Oh, I feel so bad for them. If only they learned their lesson and not supported random nations in their independence wars. I'm, I'm telling you, bro. The problem with this country is these random nations asking for support independence. Let's start getting some spy networks on Utrecht and Friesland, as they will be our next target after the independence war. Actually, I, I, I'm i gonna be sieging down some stuff myself, because, um, because honestly, I don't see them coming towards me. So maybe it's safe for me to come out of my hidey hole in Amsterdam? I mean, guys. <laughs> Guys, how lucky are we? We got a juicy 130 air. Is there anything else we can ask of? of oh, oh no, Willem. What? Why'd you jump out the window, bro? No. All right, we got 30 uh, spy networks. So let's uh, get the two claims on Friesland and Utrecht. And I'm going to be getting the guy back from uh, Friesland so that we can use him to peace out allies of Burgundy. Hey, hey, we got Willem again. This time he's not complete trash. So we're going to rename him to Will I Am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to do this, but I'm gonna give all of this uh, schnapps here to the French because I'm such a nice guy I'm totally not doing it to, uh, to give the French a lot of aggressive expansion because this is double the AE This fort has been on 21% for nine freaking ticks. There you go It just went up to 28% now. I hate this freaking game sometimes dude now second time on 28% of course Why not? Meanwhile these guys just started sieging Luxembourg and it's at 57% So they're gonna take that fort and a uh, third freaking time on 20 I Come on, man. I hate freaking Antwerp and worst fort ever. I hate this place. Please fold the third time. Fourth, fourth. Come I I'm not making this shit up, bro. What the hell is going on with this freaking RNG here? Of course, they took Luxembourg way before I even took uh, Antwerp and six. 101 days what so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grant ourselves independence and then the second thing is we have two options really we can take Antwerpen and Bruges which are the most important uh, cities that we could take both of them give a lot of trade power Antwerpen we can spawn in faceting in and we would just ins get insanely rich from this if we want to take Ghent to connect our lands though that would be a little bit of a coalition that we cannot really handle we could say do this which again is fine or this which is not really that great but here's my alternative to all of this we can take all of Flanders no coalition and we can release Brabant as one of their uh, subjects so that in case the Burgundian inheritance happens we can still attack Brabant since it is independent it's not gonna fall in a PU under France or Austria or anybody else of the sorts and we can uh, take Antwerp to spawn in faceting now I'm doing this because a lot of the times the AI is so poo poof head that it doesn't even spawn faceting for a very long time so I'm fairly confident I have all the time in the world to get faceting and just as I said that most likely what's gonna happen now is one of the nations is actually gonna get faceting really fast I, I can I can smell it man I can smell it and let's uh, lower exhaustion coral of the schnappa dupes up and um Let's get that burger loan I was talking about earlier. Remember that one, boys? Do you remember that one, eh? What's you do? There you go. 42 ducats rather than 21. Quite literally double. We can pay off all of these 4% loans. Just keep the 1% loaners, which means we only have 0.17 interest. Basically, no interest, really. And after uh, this uh, fortification in Rizel lowers the devastation in all three of the provinces that we took from uh, the uh, Flemish, we will delete the fortification. We're waiting until that happens, though, because remember, having a fort lowers 
lowers the uh, devastation 10 times faster than not having a fort in all of its adjacent provinces or all provinces covered by the zone of influence of that particular fort. We also have the special Dutch trade fleet that offers both ship trade power and colonial range. So this is going to be awesome because it's going to help us both get a colonial empire faster as well as it's going to improve our uh, trade power capabilities. So we're all about that trade power, right? Now, speaking of, let's set this guy over to protect trade in the English Channel and let's recruit a few more ships for now. Bark, a bark, and a bark. We want to go up to 20 light ships from the very beginning. So we're going to invest a little bit of money in that. We can get a show of strength against them, which is going to increase our mana points by 100 in each category. Plus, we do our age objective here, humiliate rival, making it easier for us to get the rest of these uh, age bonuses unlocked by getting more splendor in the process. And plus, we have to wait until the AE goes down for a few years anyway. We might as well have a juicy war for a couple of years and then um, after that war is over we can attack Utrecht and Dariago. Now we have to wait for, um, for military access. Schnaps. I'm gonna get it for someone else. Alternatively I can just wait until they get their own military access. That happens eventually when you're at war with multiple countries. There you go. As I was saying they did eventually get military access. So this is Utrecht giving military access to Brunswick which allows me as consequence to get military access through their lands as well. And we're gonna start. Oh no 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 I forgot to put a general. This is really not good. This is actually really not good. If they get reinforced by Brunswick, I am so screwed right now. So, uh, fingers crossed, they don't get reinforced. They didn't. Now, let's actually get a freaking leader. Jesus, mother of Schnapple dupes. That was a bad play right there, boys. I could have lost everything in the process. But hey, now we uh, we managed to get them done. So, um, let's go ahead and uh, go through Clev's lands and fully siege down their provinces. Then we can focus on Brunswick as well. I'm also talking a little bit more about every single thing that I do in this particular campaign because I want you guys to understand a bit more of my thought process whenever I do things. Maybe it's going to help you out in your particular games, or maybe not. Who knows? Oh no, Austria broke the alliance with us. I'm guessing France is going to break the alliance as well. Yep, yep, they will. Oh boy. This is no bueno. I need to get new allies now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave behind 700 units, which prevents them from actually recruiting any more units. And I'm going to stack wipe the army of uh, Brunswick, which is currently sieging down my province here. I'm going to use the extra units from the... Oh no, they retreated. So I cannot sally out my units because they retreated from the province. If they did not retreat, I could have sallied out my units as well. But that being said, I still sack wiped them in Amsterdam because I got the province of Amsterdam and I got the sea tile under my control. So uh, Brunswick's got no army, which means we can siege them down now. You know what? Uh, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to just white piece uh, the uh, Brunswick key because I don't have enough trips to siege down their capital. And I'm just not in the mood to wait for all of that. I don't want to recruit units, go there and so on. It will take way too much time. I'll just finish the war with Gelred, then I'll fight Brunswick again when I attack with no biggie. They're pretty low on manpower as it is, so it should be fairly easy to do against. Plus, we'll have way more troops after we've cored up all the southern provinces of the Flemish lands. And hey, look at that. We are the first ones to get military type 4, meaning we get 4 innovativeness in the process. Innovativeness is extremely good for playing toll campaigns, since it has the all power cost reduction, which means that uh, developing provinces, which requires mana, is also going to get reduced. So you can get up to minus 10 dev cost reduction from having 100 innovativeness. Hey, we can now do a cert or a sovereignty. Awesome. 100 military points. Not bad whatsoever. And it's time for the piss deal. Let's bring this guy back. Oh, we can get the second uh, for innovativeness. Hot dang, boys. We already have eight innovative nosus. And let's go for the show of strength. There you go. Noise. A 300 more mana points in the bank. And boys, as of uh, the domination DLC, they fixed it. So now when you do a humiliation war and you show a strength, you also get humiliate rival your age objective before that didn't happen you had to get humiliation as a one of your options in the war deal from a regular conquest war which didn't make much sense so glad to see that they fixed that after a very long time but still it's fixed that's what matters okay boys that's what matters come on i'm gonna get an alliance with the chattiest of hre nations brundenblorg and i'm also gonna get some extra alliances around here with uh, very close by nations let's say i'm doing this so i get less aggressive expansion with them because remember you get way less less aggressive expansion with nations that you're allied to. So obviously try to ally as many people as possible, especially in the HRE and especially when you plan on taking a big chunk of land. Tough call really because attacking Utrecht and Friesland is about the same thing. It's just a matter of uh, which one I prefer. If I take Friesland, I have access to East Friesland, which is again a really good province. If I take Utrecht, I get rid of the horrible yellow on the map. So uh, that's pretty much it. Not much of a strategic reason to attack Utrecht really. <laughs> Plus uh, taking uh, Friesland means I have have access 
completely here even without having control of the sea tile so makes it easier for me to transport my troops between these two provinces really but that yellow man i'm i'm just gonna go for utrecht i gotta get rid of the yellow bro He's, that's that's how it is and we managed to break the wall so uh i think i'm actually gonna assault this i'm not a very patient man plus i want to assault it so i can actually use my units against the rest of their troops here and take down Overstrucht, which is in fact exactly how you pronounce that province i am uh, 0.79 percent um flemish so I know exactly how Dutch people pronounce their provinces. Hey, we even managed to capture a ship. That's pretty cool. So now we have uh, four transports, I believe. Yes, sir, we do. I'm once again asking for your money, Brunswick. Please give. Please, please give. We're so close to taking this. I can smell the bread inside the walls of Braunschweig. What does bread actually smell like, though? Like, have you ever wondered what is the actual smell of bread? Is it really a smell or is it no smell? These are the questions I often find myself asking because I play map games all day and got nothing else better to do that's primarily why though all right there you go you guys get out of here and now let's go and settle what's up with the utrashtions so we take their provinces boom shakalokos we would get in a coalition of quite a few nations instead if we make them our vassal by going dutch vasalski it's less nations in a potential coalition against us and the best part is that if we make them a vassal we can attack friesland a lot faster because there's less aggressive expansion and then we can make them also a vassal and once we have two vassals we can get the strong duchies privilege which means we get extra diplo relation slots that's why i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna make them my vassal. there you go primarius vasalski presentius oh we can actually get new rivals now awesome so let's go with friesland this time and let's also go with what the fuck burgundy england are potential rivals are you snapping me i am not on the same level as them right now bro come on but hey i'm not complaining i'm actually gonna make um burgundy a rival because if possible i like to take now more and high no from them quickly take care of this rebellion as well and we seem to have started getting a coalition let's see who's in it a uh, few nations not too bad we still have uh, our strong alliance sets here so we're gonna keep these allies if we get any coalition triggering they're gonna have to go through all of these uh small insignificant hre nations that we allied so clearly they're not gonna declare on us we've also made full cores out of these provinces but we have to lower the autonomy because they've got quite a little bit of autonomy so now they went down to 27 percent autonomy meaning we are getting a lot lot more money a lot more manpower and everything else out of these provinces we also want to add these up to the hre so let's go ahead and expand hre in all these provinces we could also go to the hre screen add all provinces and that's probably a lot faster now i'm also going to be improving relations with the nations that joined in a coalition against me starting with liege and trier because if they have 50 relations with me they will resettle their um uh, relations with me so eventually they might actually leave the coalition against me and i can get above 50 relations with both of them well actually with all of them except friesland really first buildings we're going to be building are the uh, marketplaces since we are a trade nation and we want to get a bigger percentage of the trade in the english channel node obviously make sure you have the protect trade edict in both of these provinces or as many provinces as you might have in this particular area once more we seem to be the first ones to get that military tech amazing let's switch on over our unit we got over 50 relations with Liege. However, they haven't left the coalition. But what we could do is this. We could get an alliance with them since they have enough relations for that. So that is going to automatically make them leave the coalition against us. And then if we really want to be complete cucks, we can just cancel the alliance right after. Not going to do that though. I'm going to keep the alliance since I'm going to need them in the war against Brabant. I might feed them some Brabantian provinces, make them nice and plump for when I attack them later down the line. There you go. These guys changed their relations to friends with me now but they're still not gonna ally me because i'm allied to their right way oh okay i see what's up because i'm allied to palatinat and they are rival to the palatinat um do i need the palatinat no i don't need cancel that alliance that means i can now ally trier and boom shakalakas boys grab pretty much just these three opms and friesland in the coalition and remember they need to be five nations to trigger a coalition so it's not even possible for them to trigger that coalition against me now i could uh just do this next cancel the alliance with trier because i only have four diplo relation slots for the time being and i don't want to waste my mana points but they have a truce with me now so they cannot join a coalition even if they wanted to plus their ae went down to 48 so i am actually 
actually Ayo Safeski. Rinse and repeat with the Clevs Alliance, cancel the Alliance, and so on with Dortmund and everybody else around here. So we don't need to worry about a coalition whatsoever this entire playthrough, basically. Seems like it's that time of the day again when we can get another four mana points and we went up to 16, not four mana points, innovativeness, I meant. We went up to 16 innovativeness. 16.66, actually. So we're very special. And we can also get our second government reform. We do have the special ministerialist promotion, which is available to some HRE people. And uh, it's not bad overall. However, I'm going to go for the national tax. Early game national tax is really, really good, especially in high tax provinces. Well, in areas where there's really high tax development provinces, I mean. And one of those areas is the Dutch lands. Check it out, boys. We were to build churches. We are getting 0 0.19, 19, 17, 16, 12. That is a huge amount of uh, income from churches. And in this particular patch, churches are not as bad as they used to be before. As long as you have the available building slots, you can fit in everything, including churches. The Dutch are special because we will be playing toll. So that means we will have higher development than most nations. And as consequence, we will have enough building slots in all of our provinces to fit everything we need. Meaning we can even have churches that lower unrest as well with the new update once we get a special reform and even give more than usual taxes. When it comes to our first idea set, obviously we're going to go for the new infrastructure ideas. These are essentially the playing toll idea sets now. The last of which here gives us dev cost reduction minus 10%. Working up there, we get construction cost reduction, state maintenance, prosperity growth, expand infrastructure cost modifier reduction, construction time, expand administration cost minus 100 and so on. And the best part is that infrastructure ideas mix in extremely well with other idea groups like say aristocratic or any of the other ones. But that being said, this is an unusual thing, right? Because I've told you guys many a times that you want to go for a military idea set first since you're going to have a lot of extra military points lying around. That is true. However, we're not going to be doing too much expansion as uh, the Dutch in this campaign. In fact, we're mostly going to be vassalizing uh, nations around us so we can integrate them afterwards with the exception of Brabant, that is. So as consequence, we will get a lot of admin points. So we're going to be also focusing on admin points to help with that particular situation. 13 mana points per month is not too bad. We're going to change this guy with the production efficiency guy though so we actually get something from that particular bonus. Because we have the Flemish provinces that we took in the Independence War, we also get Renaissance super fast. That's because there's three states in EU4 that get Renaissance before anybody else. The Tuscan state, the Venetian state, and the Flemish state are special states because they get a higher percentage of Renaissance every month picking. So that's why I also took the Flemish parts in the first part of the campaign because I wanted to do the big brain. Let's go and embrace Renaissance now. Oh no, Burgundy is getting his ass kicked. Look at that. They got only 6,000 units left. And uh, oh no, they, they, they got stack wiped. They got completely stack wiped and they got no manpower. Oh my lord. Imagine if somebody was to take advantage of this particular situation that the Burgundians found themselves in and uh, attack them in order to get uh, Haino and Namur back. Mm, I still have a lot of strong alliances, so I might need some allies of myself to help against them. Say, uh, Savoy. No, they don't want. They want favors. Wow, really? Well, Liege is gonna definitely help me out in this one. And Brandenburg. Let's see. Trier, Milan, München, Constance, Catalonia. Cata what? Wait, what? Catalonia exists? <laughs> Uh, okay. That's interesting to say the least. All right. I think I'm uh, confident enough to go with this. Let's go back to speed three and uh, take out some Burgundians. By the way, guys, if you are interested in this particular save game, I will make it available to all my patrons and channel members. And hey, if you do uh, enjoy the content, consider subscribing. Why the F is my army not maintained? What? Did I not maintain my army before this? Oh God, this is going to end up badly for me, isn't it? All right. Everything's fine. As I was saying, consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach 200,000 subs by the end of uh, August. August. So if we do that, I'm going to make an amazing mega campaign that I feel like a lot of you are going to really enjoy. And I mean, hey, bro, you managed to get to this particular part of the uh, video. You might as well subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. You probably watched like, what, 15, 20 minutes by now? It means you do enjoy the content, don't you? Whether you don't like me sometimes, you probably still do deep down inside. Let's give Brandenburg some objectives to siege down the uh, München parts. So we get rid of the Bavarians from this particular war, at least. We can call good old Münster in this. 
And I'm also gonna scornfully insult uh, Brabant so I get over 50 power projection once more. Hey, yo, hold on a second here. Brabant, you actually gave in Condottieri to the Burgundians. Really, brother man? I think, uh, I think it's time that we uh, measure our PP sizes here, sir, because I'm pretty sure I got more, more uh, morale of armies than you do. There you go. That's uh, evidence right there that I got more. All right, now let's uh, get back to our sieging is Maximus. Looks like Burgundy's army is about to go bye-bye. Oh, snaps. No, no, Milan. What are you doing, Milan? No. Oh, no. Oh, there's no bueno. We got to retreat. Yes, boys. I was about to relieve the siege, but then literally all of them decided to jump on me here. I think it's time we uh, siege down Munster ourselves because uh, Brandenburg's clearly not doing a good job here. Oh, boy. What is this? Brandenburg. Brandenburg peaced out. You actual wussy. Ah, we managed to kill off the Luxembourgian boyos. Or what is this? Constance boyos. That means if we occupy their capital, not have to occupy it, just start sieging it, we will be able to piece them out now. So let's get military access to get there first and foremost. There you go. I was 100% correct. 48-39. Arrivederci, Constance. One less enemy to worry about now. And actually, you know what? I would be able to get what I want in this war. 63-55, just the two provinces of Namur and Haino. I would not get anything else, but I'll be honest with you guys, I don't want to be in this war for any longer because it's 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 just a pain. It really is just a pain. I mean, most of my allies have gotten their asses kicked. They've been targeted by Burgundy and they're just losing wars for for me and it's just i i gotta get out of this man i i need to focus on other stuff i need to focus on playing toll chili and maximum and that's pretty much it so um let's go with this let's take those two provinces now we've got most of our uh burgundian lands we just gotta take what's left of these bits here which are not obviously burgundian lands oh no i know oh, the coalition and against me well i guess i'm gonna have to do the same thing i did last time doesn't it uh it's actually not that many this time let's see brabant sure that's gonna be the last one to leave though for sure let's go ahead with Nassau and Previous Maximus. We're about to integrate the Utrecht. Make sure that you give out the uh, nobility integration policy before you integrate any subjects so you don't get the integration debuff, which is a minus three diplo rep. I know what you're also thinking, why didn't you wait until you took Friesland and then you give out the strong duchies? I will instead take a Gelre in Friesland since uh, Gelre lost some of their provinces and I can feed them back the cores over here in uh, Limburg. And I did kind of prioritize the Burgundians out of fear that they might fall in a PU. So it's it's harder for me to get Burgundian lands if they do fall into PU than it is to get Frisian and Gelrian lands, which are literally just there for the taking whenever I want to get them. Also, take note, every time you integrate your subjects, be it PUs, uh, vassals, or whatever the schnapps they are, the provinces they integrated will have 60% autonomy, so you have to lower that autonomy to take full advantage of those particular provinces. We're going to be sending a gift over to Berg, which is going to put us over 50 relations, which means it's going to change their status here to French apparently so the next month on the 25th of august we're gonna get that alliance cancel the alliance and get the truce so again they are leaving the coalition against us when it comes to our tier three government reform we're gonna be going for centralized bureaucracy which means we get dev cost modifier minus five percent prosperity growth and most importantly we get 50 percent back of our reform progress and admin points whenever we centralize a state and we will be centralizing a lot because centralizing states is vital when you're using a lot of expand infrastructure which is something that we obviously will be using in our particular playthrough. In fact, you know what? Let's start doing it now. And check it out, boys. Amsterdam alone is giving us 0.3 ducats. That is a huge sum. To make a really short uh, construction guide, quote unquote, for this particular run and for just playing toll in general, it's pretty much the same like it was before. You build workshops and their upgraded version counting houses in every single province. You build barracks and it's upgraded in every single province. You build marketplace and all the way to stock exchange only in province provinces where they give a lot more trade power than you would otherwise get so don't build in every province usually that's provinces that have centers of trade or provinces that have some uh, modifiers that increase their trade power fortifications enough to have a decent zone of control over your provinces to help with defenses of course town halls and courthouses in every single province once more because they also give autonomy reduction alongside extra number of buildings and governing cost up to 50 percent reduced universities in every single province province as well. Manufactories in provinces that give a lot of income. Soldiers household in provinces with the grain, fish, livestock, and wine, which give you double the amount of soldiers. That's pretty much it. The rest are very situational. Taxation in this patch is not so bad though, so churches and cathedrals you could build if you have extra slots and if those provinces, of course, have high tax development, like say above six tax development on average. I think it's also time for me to get rid of the mercenary companies. They've become pretty 
expensive and I'd rather just rely on regular units for the time being. And you know what? Let's do a little bit of that expand infrastructure in our provinces. Should be able to get a couple done around here. We have most of our provinces above 15 development. So that is pretty much the requirement for the first one. 15, then you go up to 30, 45, 60. And every 15 development, you can expand infrastructure once more. We're over our force limit and we're still getting 14 ducats and counting. It just begun, boys. It has just begun. Now we also need to build more ships. We only have, uh, what, 28 light ships. Let's go up to, say, 40 light ships is a good number. So we can start filtering more into the English channel from the Lubeck node as well. No, Burgundy went. It became a junior partner of Catalonia. Out of all the freaking nations imaginable, freaking Catalonia, dude. What? How is this even possible? And why is Tunisia owned? I what? What is going on here? How did Aragon completely disappear before the Iberian wedding even trigger, man? What the hell is this, dude? Holy mother of snaps. I am so shocked at what's going on. Armenia exists as well. I've seen Armenia pop out a lot in the most recent playthroughs. I'm not gonna say that maybe they got some secret buff or anything. It's probably just the Ottomans kicking Karakul Yunlu's ass again, I'm guessing. Or the Timurids, for that matter. I see they're already at the gates here of Europe. Now, boys, you probably imagine I am using a lot of my mana points to get ahead of tech uh, technologies. Like I said before, it's mostly for that innovativeness. We already have 40% innovativeness, which is huge. It literally is a permanent for the rest of the game, 4% discount on developing provinces. Deving session is over. I'm going to go back to protect trade. We've devved up a ton. We've actually made bank out of devving up as well. And we've managed to increase our force limit. Pretty much everything has been amazing because of that devving up session. But it seems like Friesland's been devving up a ton as well. 10 times in Groningen, 6 times in here. How about Brabant? Brabant's developed Antwerpen 4 times and that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, one more time in uh, Brabant itself and that's pretty much it. How about Gelre? Also one more time. Know what I'm thinking? If that's the case and these guys have developed so much, then maybe I'll just wait until I form the Netherlands and then I can just integrate Friesland as the Netherlands by asking them to join the Republic. So I don't need to actually attack them and get all of that aggressive expansion. I can just chill, bide my time, and wait for them to join me on their own accord. Let's finish up building the workshops in the two provinces we haven't built them in yet. And the same goes for the uh, barracks. Let's build up the barracks in every province we haven't built them in yet. I'd say this was a pretty successful initial phase of this campaign. So if you guys want to see the second part, leave that like. I would really love to do the second part and get into that juicy Netherlands bit of this particular run. And until the next time, check out this awesome Ottomans run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members and Twitch subscribers, I would not be able to do this without all your support.